only 7 11 students join let's wait for 20 minutes till then i'll share my screen we will start new topic okay method of section method of join done let's start it new topic thick and thin cylinder My screen is visible. Screen is visible. Thick and thin cylinders. Okay. Okay, twelve participants. Okay. Let's wait for two three minutes. Okay. Uh. So, uh, there is one correction in the assignment. In the second question, uh, in at C position, assume that the support is ruler. Okay. Uh, because that uh, frame has made by me on the PPT. So, I forgot to place that ruler support. So, many of you had a query that how to solve that. So, if you take a ruler support at C position, so you will be able to solve that question. Okay. And submit it at, as well. It will be better if you can uh, submit in the new Google Classroom. And if someone has issue with the new Google Classroom, they can submit in the earlier Google Classroom also. I have posted the same question in both the Google Classroom. It will be better if you if you join the new Google Classroom. Uh, I have shared the link also. Uh, if you can submit, you can submit there. And if you cannot submit there, then you can submit in the earlier Google Classroom, which you use in your fourth sem. Okay. Why I have choose this Google Classroom? Because many of you finding a, a error or maybe there is error in ERP system. So that's why uh, submit in Google Classroom. That will be better. And if you send me personally by email, it will be a lo lot of chaos in my mail. So it will be hectic for me to uh, grade as well. Okay. So 20 participants. Shall we start? Please respond because we have limited time in this classroom. Shall we start? Am I audible? Shall we start? Please respond. Okay. Okay. So I am starting. So today's topic is thin and thick cylinders. Okay. So what is basically thick and thin cylinders? You have generally used uh, these uh, thick and thin cylinders. Uh, you have uh, you have seen the applications in in our engineering uh, places. And it is it is used in our engineering works. Like uh, you can say that uh, you, this thin cylinders is also called as a pressure vessel. Okay, it is used for storing liquid or under pressure. Okay, you have seen the can of uh, this Coca Cola, right? Coca Cola can. When you give uh, open a lid, a pressure generally releases. So these were the cylinders. Okay, your LPG LPG gas that that is a cylinder because the liquid uh, at that LPG gas cylinder, the uh, there is a pressure inside that cylinder. So these are the small examples, uh, various examples of these kind of this. A pipeline through which pressurized fluid is flows is treated as pressure vessels. So these thick and thin cylinder is also called as pressure vessels. So uh, these oil pipelines, you have seen big, big pipelines, right? All these are uh, either considered on the thin or thick cylinders. We'll discuss the different uh, differentiate between these two. So these are generally called as pressure vessels, okay? Normally, pressure vessels are of cylindrical in shape. There are several examples of pressure vessels which are used for engineering purpose. They include boilers gas storage tanks metal tires and pipelines so these are the some examples uh, which we um, examples of thick and thin cylinders we use in our day to day life okay these are the chambers used to store uh, lpg okay these are the pipelines we have shown uh, water is to pass through these lines and some oil now so uh, pipelines oil pipelines this oil is transferred through this big big pipe so these are generally termed as Pressure vessels, okay, or pressure vessels, okay. So, what is thin cylinder? So, when the thickness of the wall of the cylinder is less than 1 by 20 of the diameter of cylinder, then the cylinder is considered as thin cylinder, okay. So, suppose this is your 
this suppose this is the uh, top view of suppose this is the top view of your cylinder this outer diameter minus inner diameter will give you the thickness this is your thickness and this is your diameter so when uh, when the thickness of the wall that means your this thickness this thickness of the wall is less than 1 by 20 of the uh, of the diameter of the wall then it is called as thin cylinder otherwise it is termed as thick cylinder okay your thickness should be less than this thickness should be less than 1 by 20 of this diameter okay you can also write as t as let me note once again so basically your when it is uh, a thick thin cylinder when your thickness is less than 1 by 20 of its diameter so this is the expression okay objective questions will come uh, when uh, differentiate means conditions for thin cylinder so condition for thin, thin cylinder is that when the thickness of the cylinder is your less than 1 by 20th of its diameter okay this diameter this thickness should be so much less than that if you divide the diameter by 120 if you divide if you divide the diameter by 20 that value should be uh, more than your thickness okay and opposite of this is called as thick cylinder so if you so, so assume a cross section l if cylinder is like that this will be its l that means length of the cylinder and this d is your diameter of the cylinder and this t is your thickness of the cylinder and t t is your internal pressure due to fluid so whatever suppose i am taking a can let me note with another color suppose i am taking a can just assume the can of your coca cola okay just assume the can of your coca cola okay uh, writing is uh, drawing is somewhat difficult just understand suppose assume the can of your diet coke okay just assume the uh, uh, assume it is a diet coke so this is your this is your diameter of the diet coke okay this is the length of the diet coke and p so whatever the fluid here it is applying a pressure on this wall okay whatever the liquid is in this whatever with the liquid the diet coke the fluid is applying pressure on these vessels so you need to know ki, uh, how much pressure it is applying on these surfaces and this pressure should not be more than uh, this thickness we have to actually why we need this thickness because we have to design this thickness in uh, such a way that the pressure applied by this p does not exceed this uh, value otherwise your uh, your pressure your pressure if pressure becomes more this uh, can, this can will fail it will burst out it, it will get failed okay that is the necessary to know what how how much pressure this fluid will act on this uh, in on this can okay so the internal see when you open the lid it get pressurized right it get pressurized and you'll get some bubbles so all the uh, fluid here it is act it is giving a pressure on its wall okay so this is your pressure the this diameter and length and the, your thickness is the important parameter to design a pipeline or gas gas and all okay i have just, i have just given you an example of diet coke hope this part is clear so generally uh, your cylinders are employed so generally cylinders are employed for transporting or storing fluid that is liquids and gases so uh, all the uh, oils you used in your cars and all some natural gases are passed pass through those uh, pipelines only from one place to another okay we have many examples in our assam so examples lpg cylinders boilers we have seen storage tanks many many storage tanks from the refinery all those use these cylinders only okay due to the fluids inside a cylinder these are subjected to fluid pressure okay understood what i am saying due to the fluid inside a cylinder these are subject to fluid pressure that fluid uh, that fluid is acting a pressure constantly applying uh, pressure on the surfaces of the container that is uh, also called as internal pressure p Hence, at any point on the wall of the cylinder, P 
three type of stresses are developed in perpendicular direction so suppose i'm assuming a bottle or a cylinder this is our cylinder okay if if fluid is inside some fluid is inside this can okay and this can is applying pressure on pressure this uh, it is a, a pressure three types of pressure is applying on this uh, is uh, is getting applied on this can one is circumferential stress which is also called as hoop stress and it is represented by sigma theta somewhere it is represented by sigma h okay doesn't uh, just you should know that it is called sometime it is called circumferential stress or hoop stress so don't get confused with the words hoop stress is similar to uh, just it is another name is circumferential stress so this stress is see this name suggests circumferential so this stress is along the circumference of this can along the circumference along the outer position okay that is along the suppose if i if i divide this uh, if i divide this uh, can so it is it is will be somewhat like this let me erase this part so if i divide this part so this will be like this like this somewhat like this this is the upper part and uh, there will be one more part so this are so the stress in this this area st stress is over the circumference okay stress in the circumference of this uh, can is your circumferential stress next is longitudinal stress along the length of the can okay and do, next is the radial stress which is represented by sigma r along this radius we'll discuss one by one okay so let's uh, see the assumption assumption in thin cylinders are it is assumed that the stresses are uniformly distributed throughout the thickness of the cell that means the, see this is the example they are saying that stress whatever with the stress this is the this is the just assume that i have divided this uh, can into two parts this is the one part okay this pi is your all the internal forces acting on the circumference of this uh, can this so circumferentially it is acting sigma theta that is your hoop or circumferential stress along the length it is getting sigma l which is also known as longitudinal or axial stress and this is the radial stress that means along the diameter it is getting there will be one radial stress here we generally can don't consider radial stress why will uh, uh, will study that but we are first assumption the, that all the stresses suppose at this point suppose at this point all the stresses at uh, every point is uniform suppose it if stress is applying here is 50 kN here will also be 50 kN so along the along the circumference or along the length all the stresses stresses will be uniform uniform means if it is at this point it is acting 30 kN at this point also it will act as 30 kN so that is our first assumption next is as the magnitude of radial stress is very small in thin cylinders they are neglect, neglected while analyzing thin cylinders so the magnitude of sigma r is very very less so we generally don't consider this stress on thin cylinders so the two major stress is circumferential stress this circumferential stress and another is longitudinal stress these two stresses are generally considered because they are large in magnitude radial stress is very less in magnitude that's why we don't consider this stress so let's start with circumferential stresses this assumption is clear till now it is clear please respond hello okay okay so let's start with uh, your circumferential stress so the stress is 
directed along the tangent to the circumference of the cylinder this stress is tensile in nature this stress tend to increase the diameter this understand this line this stress is directed along the tangent to the circumference of the cylinder this stress is tensile in nature this stress tends to increase the diameter increase the diameter just the focus the word increase the diameter so that means this t this along the circumference it is trying to divide to uh, the it is suppose let me a uh, note suppose this is my can okay this is my can this is my cylinder so this internal p is trying to divide the section into two parts okay just as two part this internal force uh, the force along the circumference of this uh, circumference of this uh, cylinder is trying to it is trying to divide this section into two parts okay so it is increasing the diameter earlier the diameter was this much it is tensile in nature see we are always assume that tensile force is in this direction okay so the force is tensile in nature it is uh just assume that uh it is the fluid this the fluid in the can is applying a pressure in such a way that it is uh, dividing the section in two halves okay that is your hoop stress or long, circumferential stress the stress which is increasing the diameter which is tensile in nature which is uh dividing this uh dividing the uh, cylinder in two halves okay that is your circumferential just assume the uh, just imagine that you have a cylinder and the fluid inside the uh, uh, cylinder is trying to uh, is trying to uh, divide that uh, divide that uh, cylinder in two halves two equal halves okay that is your hoop or circumferential stress so the derivation for this stress let's say the what is the formula how we get p i d by 2 this is the formula very important from gate point of view and if uh, this time if online exam then i can give you numer many numericals you will uh, get in your uh, future engineering exam exams or uh, gate exams very important formula hoop stress is equals to pi d by 2t okay what is pi we have discussed it is a in uh, a pressure intensity this pressure intensity this pressure intensity <coughs> this pi is this pressure intensity d is your diameter t is your thickness of the cylinder so see what what is important diameter and thickness of the cylinder is very important for to determine the stress along with pressure intensity so how we get this stress let's see the total force on half of the cylinder due to internal pressure the total force on half of the cylinder due to internal pressure is given by you know pressure is equal to force force per unit area right now we want force so what it will be pressure into area pressure is nothing but force per unit area we need force so force will be pressure into area so your total force on half of the cylinder will be pressure which is nothing but we have we have known that pi into projected area see what will be the area of this cylinder length into diameter area will be just assume the area of this strip because circumference is this l into d your area is your d into l so here this pressure is your pi and the projected area is your d into l assume as equation number 1 next we have next we have the total resisting force due to hoop stress sigma theta established in the cylindrical walls is given by 
length into two. This is your area. We you have two strips. That's why two into pressure. Let me show with the diagram. We have two strips, right? There will be one strip like this, and there will be one strip like this. Where your where your resisting force will apply due to hoop stress. So you have this. We have two strip. I, I, there will be a two strip, right? There will be one, one upper upper. There will be this. Let me show. Yes. So this is one half. There will be another half here downward also, right? So there will be two. This is the upper part. There, there will be one more part in this direction. Yes or no? So one and one more. So two along this L into D. This D into L. Your area is your D into L, and you have two strips along this also and along this also. That's why it is two into D L. And we know hoop stress is acting along this direction, so that will be sigma theta multiplied. So total resisting force due to hoop stress established in the cylindrical wall is given by two sigma theta into L by T. So this one, this one was your one force this one is another force okay this force the force on half of the cylinder due to internal pressure so due to internal pressure your force is your ti d into l and the resisting force due to hoop stress so whatever force is applying applied on your uh, uh, see when we apply a force on a structure it will give you a resisting force right it, suppose if a person is standing I'm uh, giving a push to that person. He will try to resist me. Okay. First, if the if my for, uh, force is not more than his resistance force, so he won't be deflected. So uh, when we give us whatever with a material, we give a force, we'll get a opposite. See, you you know every every action has equal and opposite reaction. That's the thing. When you apply uh, when we applied a force. Okay, we'll get a resisting force also, the backward force. So your resisting force is sigma uh, two sigma theta into L into T, and the force you have applied is pressure intensity into D into L. So these two forces we can equate. If we after equating, L L will get cancelled. No, this is D L, right? No, it won't be cancelled out. This is equation one. This is equation two. When you equate, you'll get sigma theta equals to ti. This one, ti dl by two lt. Okay. Now see, your dl by l is nothing but your diameter. When you differentiate l with respect to l, you get diameter. So your hoop stress will become ti d by Twice of t. Differentiation has been has been clear in math class, I guess. Now let's see. Now let's see your this stress, longitudinal stress. So hoop stress was when uh, when you hoop stress is applied by the internal pressure when it tries to. Uh, it tries to pull out the section in two halves. Okay, now the longitudinal stress. So the stress is directed along the length of the cylinder. This stress is also tensile in nature, and this uh, stress tends to increase the length. That stress tries to increase the diameter of the section. This tries to increase the length. So see, uh, this is the section. This is the section T is acting. Longitudinally, so it tries to get the section in two halves. This is one half, another. This is another half. So in ten, uh, this longitudinal stress tries to increase the length of the section. It tries to cut the section into two halves. So just assume you have a cylinder. You have a cylinder with you, where one one force is trying to cut the section in two halves. 
and one uh, in two halves that is your hoop stretch and one stretch is applying in longitudinal direction that is trying to increase the length of the section which is two major stress applying on the uh, cylinder thin cylinders we generally consider one is hoop stress which tries to consider uh, break this structure into two parts means equal half okay these internal pressures and another is longitudinal it is also in tensile in nature and this tends to what it do it tends to cut the section in longitudinal that means it tries to increase the length okay it gives in a longitudinal direction force it tries to cut the section in two halves let's see the derivation of this total longitudinal force or you can say busting force on the ends of the cylinder is pressure into area now you will consider the whole area of the section so area of cylinder is nothing but pi by 4 d square pi by 4 d square okay area of cross section where longitudinal stress is developed so longitudinal stress is developed over the perimeter so it is pi d into t and the resisting force due to longitudinal stress will be sigma l this was the area you will get the force pressure into area so sigma l pi dt now you have to equate this one <coughs> with this one this was was the force applied on the cylinder okay and this this is the resisting force so we have to equate the applied force with the resisting force so this is equation 1 this is equation 2 so under equilibrium resisting force is equal to total busting force you can just write total longitudinal force also busting means it tries to pull out okay so when you equate you will get longitudinal stress as pd by 40 okay pd if, if we solve this you will get pd by 40 so longitudinal stress was pd by 40 and hoop stress was pd by 2t see it is very easy to remember it is pd by 2t and it is pd by 40 okay it is pd by 2t this i have represented by i intensity you can just directly take t this is pd by 2t this is pd by 40 so your hoop stress is pd by 2t and longitudinal stress is pd by 40 till this part is clear Am I audible? Till this part is clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's. We have time. So let's see some numericals. Let me check. All of you have done the assignment. Hmm? No, 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 no. Why? Why not complete? Difficult, difficult. Why difficult? Where is difficult? Next class we'll study this this part, okay? Mm, this six cylinder. Let me see. We can do quick numerical on this or not. Give me a second. Which part you got difficult? You find found out difficult in the second question. Make a correction that uh, it will be roller support. Now I hope this this will be easy. There is nothing to do much. So easy. So this part is clear or not? Let's see one numerical. I don't know. 
Check. Okay, till then, all of you write your roll number in the chat box. Write your roll numbers in the chat box. Done. Let me know if you're done with your phone number. Everyone is done. Put your roll numbers, then we can move to one quick numerical on this. Hope everyone wrote their roll numbers. Last date for uh, assignment has been given. I've mentioned that. Please check. Why are always 33? Where are other students? They don't join class. Some students are there, they don't join class and they give feedback as one. That teacher doesn't have any knowledge about the subject. And that, uh, that student has not joined class any when just one or two class. Okay, anyways, your point of view. Can't do like this. So number twenty six server is one, so I wrote that thing. My screen is visible. There's one numerical. A cylinder boiler is two point five meter in diameter visible. Okay. Screen is visible? No. Let me share once once again. Now? Now it is visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, see the question. A cylinder boiler is 2.5 meter in diameter. I'll share this PDF just now, just after this class. Okay. This, this, I have, this chapter I have taken from a book. So, you will get the, every notes is here, numerical is also here. You just see from here. Okay. A cylinder boiler is 2.5 meter in diameter and 20 mm in thick. And it carries steam at the pressure of this. Find the stresses in the uh, cell. So very easy uh, numerical. Diameter is given to you. See, always see the uh, units. Okay. Diameter of the cell is given to you 2.5 meter. So 
so if you convert in mm see these are in mm mm so better you convert this in mm so 2500 thickness of cell 20 mm internal pressure is given to you 1 newton per mm square so you have to find the stresses in the cell and we know there will be only two major stresses one is longitudinal stress another is hook stress and we know longitudinal stress is pd by 4t hook stress is pd by 2t so these are the values easy right we get positive answer so this is and we know these two stresses are tensile in nature so they have just wrote tensile next see in a thin cylinder cell in a thin cylinder cell stress will be higher since it is double that of longitudinal stress just read the line carefully in a thin cylindrical cell stress will be higher since it is double that of longitudinal stress hence maximum stress is reached in the circumference cell okay so sorry this is the question a thin cylinder a thin cylinder vessels of 2 meter diameter 4 meter length and pressure the diameter is given length is given pressure is given if the permissible tensile stress of the material of the cell is this that means your stress is given to you find the maximum th thickness required so thickness you have to find the t value so in a thin cylindrical stress uh, shell stress will be higher since it is double that of longitudinal stress you see you know hook stress is pd by 2t right pd by 2t and your longitudinal stress is pd by 4t if you relate this to how will you relate this to longitudinal and how will you relate longitudinal and uh, hook stress there is just one difference right your hook stress is nothing but pd by 2t and your longitudinal stress is td by 4t so there is one common there is a relation between h and l l see the relation in a thin cylindrical stress stress will be higher since it is double that of longitudinal stress so if i if i multiplied and divide by 2 I, right i can multiply this multiplied by 2 divide by 2 it will not give any uh, significance so what this value will become to me it will become twice of l or not is it or is it have you understood this part hook stress is twice of longitudinal stress that means your hook stress is twice more than longitudinal stress this part is clear what i'm saying here it is clear am i is it okay have you understood this part your your hook stress is pd by twice t your longitudinal stress is pd by 4t if i want to find a relation between hook stress and longitudinal stress the relation will be h equals to 2 into l understood this part i'm saying that suppose a hook stress is pd by twice t right pd is pd by twice t if you multiply by 2 and divide by also 2 will affect it anything you can write you can you are multiplying over by 2 and dividing by 2 so it will won't affect anything but if i want to write in terms of l so pd 2 to the 4 into t so pd by 4t is nothing but our l l into 2 So your hook stress is twice times of L. Your hook hook stress is twice times bigger than your longitudinal stress. Clear this part? Please respond. This part is clear. That is here it is saying. In a thin cylindrical stress, stress that means hook stress will be higher since it is double that of longitudinal stress. Hence maximum. <coughs> maximum stress is reach in the circumferential direction so hook stress is in circumferential direction this part is clear please respond
Am I audible? No one is responding. Okay. This part is clear? Okay, once again. <coughs> okay. See, your hoop stress has formula of, your hoop stress has a formula of, your hoop stress has a formula of PD by twice T. Right? Your hoop stress has formula of PD by twice T and your longitudinal stress has a formula of PD by 4T. If I ask you to find a relation between hoop stress and longitudinal stress, so how, what will you do? So see, hoop stress, in hoop stress C, PD twice C. If you multiply this by 2 and divide by also 2, 2 to cancel, ho jata hai na? 2 get cancelled with 2. Na? So if I multiply it by 2 and divide by 2, how can I write this formula once again? I can write it as since PD 2 to the 4, I can this can be written as PD 40 into 2. The same thing can be written as PD by 40 into 2 or not. We can write right and this PD by 40 is nothing but our L. So H is equal to twice into L. So your hoop stress is twice times more than your longitudinal stress. See again if I write 2 into PD by 4T. So this 2 can be 2 cancelled by 2. So we our we'll get our whole PD by 2T. So basically I'm saying I'm just want I just want to say that your hoop stress is twice times of L. Your hoop stress is twice times of twice times of your longitudinal stress. Okay. So, so see diameter is given to you. Internal pressure is given to you, permissible tensile stress is given to you, you have to find the thickness. So this is the formula PD twice T is equals to 150. Your permissible tensile stress is nothing but your circumferential stress. So we have equated the PD by twice T equal to 150. From here you find you can find out the T. So your minimum thickness required is 11 mm. Find the stress will be higher because it is double that of our Understood this numerical? Why you have taken 150? Why you have taken the hoop? You can you can ask me that so why you have taken the hoop stress formula here you could have taken the longitudinal stress formula also but this maximum you you always take the maximum stress okay you always design a structure you always design us uh, you always design for maximum stress so you have to design this stress also for maximum stress and we know maximum stress will be hoop stress because it is twice of l that's why i've taken the hoop stress formula see if you take pd by 4t as 150 you can find t value from here also but this will be wrong because this is not the maximum stress so we are we have to take the maximum stress that's why we have taken hoop stress so hoop stress has formula pd by 2 equals to 150 clear or not this one response response okay 